Ola Kinna Leto, I am Leto, also known as Mahadi. Not Mahali, Mahadi. I'm the girl that calls four countries home. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for joining this family. Uh, my old subscribers and new subscribers, I thank you. I love you. And I'm here for you. I am your subject. And I came back for, I was going to do a different video today, but I think it is imperative to address my most recent video about restraining orders. I have been schooled. I have been schooled. Um, so I've got printouts. I think there's, there's just one comment on that video and a lot of views. And I think the silence is saying a lot. I don't know, but I think I may have ruffled some feathers. But let me let me not uh, make light of the situation. I know I offended some people. I believe so. Uh, from a message I got, and um, basically, let me just apologize. You know, let me just apologize. I was under the impression that I explained myself very clearly on the video, and what i mean and how specific uh, my comments are but um i think they have been um taken much more generally and of course when they're general they're very very potentially offensive and damaging you know uh, so i'll just read i think it is important to uh for you guys as well who were just wondering what other people are thinking or what have you uh, I've got direct messages and I think it's important to, to come read them for you so we hear what uh, the people think but most especially for our brothers and, or my brother that I was talking about and your friends or anyone else in the situation you can be educated from this you'll be informed from this as well because I had a sister who is um, she's a family lawyer she's been a family lawyer for 13 years here in Perth. So I think I'll actually start with her response to the video. I wrote everything down, but she sent me a VN. I, I couldn't, um, she did call, it was an unknown number, so I don't answer unknown numbers. Uh, but then I found out it was her, but then she did send a VN, so yeah. Um, thank you so much, sis, and I hope, open invitation, I do hope you can come to my channel and just educate us, you know? Uh, because these things affect so many of us. It's not just the heartache of the marriage breaking, but the after effects, you know, everything else. And a lot of us just don't know what, what to do. And I think that's probably the most terrifying thing. The most scary thing is just not knowing where to from here. What do I do now? Because this person that was like once your better half, your closest person, is now fighting you and they know you you know your depths and now they're here now they are at war with you where do you start what do you do and um so it's, it's very important to educate ourselves um you know because education is, is is liberation educate ourselves with the law especially when it comes to children and our properties and things like that so yeah, let me not waste time. Um, I will, I hope I will link up. Uh, let me not make promises that I, I, I can't keep. I'm not, I'm not a good YouTuber. <laughs> I am supposed to link up the video I'm talking about so you can see if uh, you're new here or if you did not watch it. It just said uh, having a restraining order against him. I think that's how I put it. Um, yeah so background uh, i was talking about a gentleman that um, spoke to me that the wife had a restraining order against him and there was an issue of not being able to see the kids for two years uh what else there was also a friend whose wife has also uh, put a restraining order against him and she mentions uh, emotional abuse she mentions uh, the physical abuse that happened 17 years ago. So 
that's sort of like the background so you sort of make sense of the responses i got i'm gonna read three responses uh that i got which i think are very um pivotal is that a the right word i think they're very very good um they sort of like cover what probably a lot of you may have been thinking uh but they they're also very educational and also very what is it called enlightening something that makes you aware like for me you know that something that i had overlooked myself so yeah so she says uh the lawyer friend she says that when okay so she she basically she was just telling me that you know from a lawyer's perspective when she heard my video she was like mm, that doesn't sound right you know um so anywho she says that when a victim applies for a, i just wrote notes from her vn when a victim applies for a restraining order an interim order is served um so the perpetrator then have 21 days to object to it oh i wish i had written down my responses to her because i feel like my responses were good but i hope i can remember but it doesn't matter because i'm responding now like and for this I, I i sort of had a light bulb moment actually that because ah. she made a point that um he may not have responded in that 21 days um and that's why you know things may have happened the way they've happened but let me read um, everything else that she said she says that if he objects if she if he objects um to the met if she objects ah. english never loved us if he objects um the matter then goes to what is called a shuttle conference that's where the terms of the order can be negotiated um if that fails then it goes to an actual trial so at the trial that's only where the two-year thing comes in so there's all these steps before it gets there uh in in, in, in trial the applicant gets cross-examined and they have to provide witnesses and proof of their claims you know um so all this happens before the order is made final so it is very clear from here that indeed a lot of things were missing um, as i had explained in that video that i could not say everything all the details but it does sound like he either but i know he fought for his kids he fought for his kids and as a result his kids are with him now they they're with him every weekend and when the mother wants to go away she gives them to him to stay with him you know so i guess they're okay now um in terms of co-parenting um so i think yeah i think he may have not responded in that 21 days because i know a lot of people i know it's just shocking so for me also the other thing that i just came and guns blazing like ladies what are you doing i do believe there are ladies who do that and i do believe that you know when like like she says here like if someone doesn't respond in 21 days you know what i mean then or some people just decide like what 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 um this lady said is that what you know her thoughts is she he didn't seek legal advice and i i agree with with her i think he did not i sort of could relate because i've seen it happen where someone just feels yeah you can't tell me what to do whatever you can't tell me how to parent my children or you can tell me where i can go or not go you know what i mean so that may have happened my brother i'm not saying you did that <laughs> i'm not saying you did that in your case but i would like to acknowledge very much 
um, that it may be an anomaly, your situation, if that's what ended up happening to you, that's not how things happen. And I'm, I'm very happy to be enlightened and educated because I have shared on this platform how I have felt let down. I guess it's because of my, also my lack of understanding of the legal system, the Western Australia legal system, because I got divorced and I did not know. And I, that's why I was like, I thought this system can so easily get a restraining order if they feel the, uh, the applicant has a strong, um, a strong case and maybe not even verify or if yeah if they just feel uh, satisfied with with what the um, victim brings to court you know which may not necessarily be um, accurate I don't want to shoot myself in the foot but here I'm not talking about genuine victims I'm talking about in a case where, like I said on the other video, things that may potentially be made up. If the defendant doesn't stand up for themselves, if they go, if they don't get legal advice, if they go all emotional on the matter, then they're going to end up getting, you know, that's my understanding of the situation. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so because I also, my divorce case got closed without my knowledge. That's how for me, it was like, it's possible for such a thing to happen. And of course I got, I got mail like a month and a half later where they were telling me about my divorce date. So they did let me know. It just Australia post no idea what happened there, but I only got the information a month and a half too late. I was already divorced by then because it was granted. It gets granted and then 30 days, takes 30 days uh, to be finalized or oh, the other way, the words, I'm not sure if I'm using the right words. Sorry guys. I feel something in my eye. So yeah. Um, so this, this, um, lady was just saying that uh also in our people she feels that our people our african people she's african she was just saying that our people don't seek legal advice and it's true a lot of people don't know we don't know what's happening you know i've i've I found that having uh, gone through this people really don't know what to do people don't know how things work you know it's all about we're all about trying to go like on common sense uh and you don't know how to fight you know i've had a lot of people contact me how did you sell the house how did you you know because people really don't know so thank you so much i value your input i feel like indeed um something happened or something did not happen in the case of my brother hence he ended up where he ended up um yeah so i'm gonna read um another thing which is it's very very related to what it, it's someone's experience personal experience um yeah so i'll just i'm just gonna read exactly as it's written and i'm gonna i'm not gonna mention names I hope it's okay, my sister. Mahali, the information that the person has given you pertaining to restraining order is not true. There must be an evidence of physical violence before any form of violence uh, restraining order is granted. If the order is made in the absence of the other person, the person bound has 21 days to object to the order and it will be listed for hearing between both parties. So this is what the lawyer said. If the other party believes there has been no form of violence or prior police intervention and they have evidence um, to support that they have the right to support that they have the right to object the order which the matter which the matter is then listed for trial 
where evidence has to be presented to the court before the final two years order is granted. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that straightforward. Before it gets to the two years, there is steps and steps and the perpetrator slash defendant needs to respond, needs to state their case, needs to object to prevent it even going to the court. In Australia, there's something called statute of limitations. There is no statute of limitations for criminal offenses meaning a victim of a crime such as domestic violence can bring a case against the perpetrator any time. I think statute, I don't know what stage of limitations mean, but I think it means you have a limited time to, like you can, you can bring a matter to court up to a certain time, you know, certain length of time. They give you, you have a certain amount of time or years within which you can bring the matter to court. That's how I understand it. Also, please note that not in all cases, children are included in the orders. If a child is 18, they are deemed to be an adult by the court, hence are not included in the orders. I know that some mothers would include their minor children in the order. Nevertheless, if the child is under 18, there must be evidence that the child has been subjected to abuse by the person being restrained. Please note that the person being restrained can object the other at the order and it can go to trial, which is what I mentioned before, where evidences are presented to the court by both parties to the proceedings. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if I should read this because this is the next part is sort of it's her personal. Okay, anyway, she says, I have a restraining order on X. But baby being a minor is not restrained from seeing or talking to dad. Also, even with restraining order in place, he and I can still communicate. Okay. I told the court my preferred method of communicating with him. And this is merely because we have assets such as properties. Uh, in, 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 in common. Okay. So they have, uh, merely because we have assets such as properties in our names that we have to communicate about the, the management of uh, properties even though we have real estate agents managing the properties we also have to communicate about other matters so i made known to the court which incorporated that into the orders okay and also um she, she says despite uh, the fact that she has a restraining order on him he's still allowed to live at the family home because she moved out so she didn't want to deprive him from his home. So she only distrained him from where she lived. So you can choose the, uh, the boundaries of the order. Okay. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. So this is from someone talking from experience. Um, so my brother... <laughs> You have to come to my channel. You have to come to talk. If you will, you have to come. Otherwise, I think this is extremely helpful and enlightening and educational. So, yeah, I, be, I guess we stand corrected. Um, but I did try to be specific and particular in my previous video to say I'm not talking on a general sense. I'm talking on this specific um, issue. On this you know on these people that I have been told of and in the under the assumption that what is being said is true but it does sound like it may be half the truth it is missing it's got holes it is missing some information and um, I'm glad that now we have full information of what actually goes on in in such um, circumstances 
So my sister, I also want to acknowledge your letter that I got, I think this morning. And I do apologize. Um, hi, hello, sis Leto. I recently subscribed to your YouTube channel several weeks back. I generally enjoy your channel and how you curate content, but today's video was incre incredibly harmful. You've platformed someone who sounds like a knock, who is invalidating the harm he clearly caused that necessitated a restraining order to begin with. If you haven't already, please read up on strangulation slash strangulating. Sounds like that's exactly what he's doing, trying to garner your uh, allyship. Women are not crazy, quote unquote, that they weaponize restraining orders, nor are legal systems actually, which is why restraining orders are not simply handed out like pamphlets. I, I'm feeling that, I'm feeling that, I'm feeling that. <sighs> Generally, when women choose to stand up for themselves, abusive men don't know how to engage that. They don't know how to respect those boundaries and oftentimes are likely to intensify the abuse. Restraining orders serve to reinforce those boundaries that abuse men men will almost always violate uh, it's abusive it is unsurprising then that when an abuser is expected to respect boundaries that he will feel like he is deprived something he feels entitled to it's like the example you made of your ex thinking he can come and go at your house whenever he pleases and um and he acted out uh when you as assumed that boundary or when you sorry there's like arrows that are hiding but yeah when i uh, did that boundaries that um okay okay i i printed i printed um the next page which didn't have the arrow at the bottom it's like uh, the example you made on your ex thinking he can come over come and go at your house home whenever at your home whenever he pleases and how he acted out when he when you asserted that boundary and it's like he the saying goes people who get angry when you assert boundaries are those who benefited from you having none when it comes to kids generally mothers often make decisions that they deem best for their children if anything it is usually the men who struggle to make decisions that aren't selfish so it's less likely that the narrative about the mother using the children or keeping them from him is accurate sis thank you so much thank you thank you thank you so much i acknowledge i think i feel like i miss i've missed a page yes here's the page that i missed the last thing you also use language from the abuser's script in your video the example you made about someone bringing up things from 17 years ago etc that's harmful speak. Abuse has no expiry date. And sometimes when people are still in their abusive marriages slash relationships, they can't see clearly what their experiences are. And when they leave or start doing the work in therapy, only then in retrospect can they name their experiences for what they are. The fact that some time has passed does not invalidate their experiences. To imply that it does is harmful. I'm mentioning this because I think you mean well, and I hope it will help you reflect. I hope it is useful feedback. Keep well. Oh, thank you so much, sis. Extremely useful feedback. Extremely useful feedback. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you brought that up because I can imagine if other people also thought like you that that's how, that's what I was saying. Or if that's how what I said um, sounded or how it was presented, then that's horrible. That's horrible, you know. Um, I think I came from a point of assuming everybody knows my story and knows exactly how I feel, what I think, you know. I have, I totally, I, I have been this person, so I could not even imply that um there's no such thing that that abuse has an expiry date and i feel like I, I i i explained in the video so let me not 
explain myself let me not explain myself because sometimes that does even more damage let me just apologize and just say that is not what i meant and um i i, I totally agree i i totally agree with that point it is extremely harmful it is extremely harmful um thank you so much this feedback is very 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 valid very very valid um of course i would not call my brother a knock um but i must say i did say to him as well that as we were talking he he felt like Anywho, there were some concerns, you know, I did, I did, um, I did ask him and I did even say, I wonder what his wife side of the story would be because I didn't just take it on, on face value what he was saying, but, um, they, they were definitely things that needed explaining a bit more. Um, but I'm glad I brought this here for us to discuss you know i'm glad i brought this here for us to discuss and i think i'd like us to discuss a lot more issues like this people's dilemmas and we discuss what we think is going on here my mistake was to come present the matter from a point of believing 100 percent what he said without leaving room for the possibility that the story might be a little bit adjusted yeah but yeah thank you thank you guys um thank you so much everyone that that um commented and i remember even the comment on the video uh, which i saw was also saying the law you know the restraining order wouldn't just be given just like that uh, so i feel like it's um the same theme to say there's another side to the story um and women don't i mean there are women there are men just like there are men who cry wolf you know let's not even that is there but like you say my sister in here just so as we know in our society sadly it's, it's a very small percentage of men who are actually genuine and care about the children's well-being and not just looking to their selfish gains you know when marriages break up or any in any um instance so that's why i do always tend to to be to be honest i i tend to believe the woman's story over the men's story um which is it's not good but i i if i have two stories i will believe the woman over the man um and perhaps i should have endeavored to get the woman's story in this instance as well so i can present the two sides but yeah my brother um your friends here's the information i've presented and uh, anyone else that's still going through this please seek legal advice and hear what your rights are and do the right thing by your children do the right thing by your ex um yeah there's, there's a too much of a bad rep of our african men or just men in general please let's let's do better men gentlemen let's do better um i had a father who was such an incredible man so i know men can be good 
and incredible and and have morals and love their families and and fight for their families be the mufasas uh, of their families and even in breakup you can still carry yourself with dignity and respect and still respect your ex the mother of your children like you know i i totally have big respect for men who respect the mothers of their children you know yeah so yeah that's all i have to say thank you thank you thank you for watching uh big big thank you to the ladies who contacted me whose messages i have read and shared thank you to you watching and uh, again biggest biggest apologies where i tripped in sisutu we say E, 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 literally meaning even with four legs it still trips so my apologies where whatever explanations I, I made of my views or whatever else uh, offended anybody please please um, I don't know how to I don't know what that actually means I know I know what it's saying but I don't know in what sense, like what, what it's meant to mean. I, like I know what it's meant to mean. What am I saying? Ah, it means um, put my hands in water. Like, but I don't know in what way. I know it's used to say, please bear with me, but I don't know why. Where does that come from? I always imagine it as, you know, when washing your hands, when someone washes your hands, but yeah basically yeah i'm saying bear with me apologies we are growing we are learning um this is a platform of love of empowerment uh, of enlightenment so yeah not a platform to put anybody down or to in any way um minimize anybody's experience oh my goodness no not at all not at all not here not here Okay, love you guys. Thanks for watching up to this point. Love you, but remember that God loves you even more. Ciao, ciao.